Hi, I'm Tracy Smith, writer and broadcaster on sustainable living and author of the Book of Rubbish Ideas. Welcome to my eclectic kitchen in Somerset. Um, I have an array of goodies on the table today and I want to show you some of the, the tips that I've put in the book that will help you to save cash and be much kinder to the environment. Living sustainably isn't about being mean and tight with your cash. It's about being savvy up here. It's also about pulling back from some of the pre-packed ideas that we're surrounded by, chemical things for this and for that. Do you know what? There are lots of options that are probably lurking in your kitchen cupboards as we speak. Let me take you around my table and show you what I mean. You've probably got a bottle like this with an interesting looking toxic substance in it. And if you turn it over on the back, you'll probably see lots of little crosses that say, caution, do not get near eyes, do not expose to sunlight, do not, do not, do not. Do you know what? I don't have any problems if I make my own. This is a, an X bottle of conditioner, now filled with water, lemon juice, and some bicarbonate of soda, which is it's fantastic for getting stains out. A good friend of mine, husband's a lorry driver, comes back with all that greasy, diesely stuff all over his clothes. If you put it into a bucket overnight, with half a cup of this, you'll get all the stains out and then you can move it to a, a far less chemically infused way of washing to bring out those whites again. One way you can do it is uh, with eco balls. This is one of three eco balls. Have you seen them in the shops there? They're not really mainstream. A lot of the ideas that I've talked about in the book of rubbish ideas are not necessarily mainstream, but they're very, very available if you do a little bit of research on the internet. So what's this all about? Well, it's a non-chemical uh, option for washing your clothes. Inside here, listen, you've got lots of little tiny balls. And what they essentially do is, it's like lemonade. They bubble the dirt out of your washing, which is genius. Something else you could use, which is, I love these. These are soap nuts. Soap nuts from a soap tree. Did you believe there was a soap tree? There is. It's a sapon tree. And this is the product from the sapon tree, which when it's left to dry, turns into a little crunchy ball. And if you put a little handful of those into a linen bag and chuck it in with your wash, job done. Now, cleaning out the rubbish. How can we go around the house? The idea of the book of rubbish ideas is that you can go from room to room and look for different ways to reduce the rubbish that you create in that room. I went to a hotel recently, lucky me, and I got this, which I have to say is the most pointless piece of plastic I think I've ever seen. One squirt of toothpaste, how crazy is this? Tiny, one use of toothpaste. And where's it going to go into landfill? Where's it, how long is it going to sit there? Probably for about 200 years. It's oil-based, it's plastic, it's awful. If you think about changing the size of the stuff that you buy, for example, this is, uh, this is white vinegar, which you can use for all sorts of things, not just pickling eggs. Um, you can use it for lots of cleaning things. Buy in bulk, buy big stuff, split it between two or three of your friends and you'll all save money. And you'll also have the basis of a recipe to, to make several other things. If one of you makes up a bottle of something that's quite pleasant, share it, give it to someone else. Swap and share your abundances. It's a brilliant idea, a nice way to save money and a nice way to give really thoughtful gifts. The kitchen is probably one of the worst places for storing rubbish. We collect rubbish, I mean, it's just impossible not to. So tea bags here, for example, coffee, made a nice pot this morning, what do I do with it now? Chuck it out on the, uh, around your vegetable beds. The slugs really can't stand coffee grinds and you'll put a nice preventative barrier uh, against them and your tomatoes. And what do you do when you get to the bottom of your soaps? You know when they get so tiny that the kids say, I don't want to use that, they want to open a new one and you just think, oh, just use that last one, use it till it's finished and they won't. Simple. Get some soap, get a grater and grate it. Or give them the job actually of grating it. It's really quite good fun and you can end up with a really nice pot of flaky soaps which you can use for two purposes. Number one to chuck in your bath, quite good fun, or into your washing machine. If you challenge your perspective on rubbish and what rubbish is 
you'll find yourself reducing the amount of stuff you bring into the home and ultimately the amount of stuff you've got to get back out the door again. A brilliant example of this is with water, water bottles. I mean, they're everywhere. I was given this one the other day uh, on a journey back and it, it was handy. You know, we grab them, we don't necessarily think, but what am I going to do with it afterwards? Well, actually, I'll probably use it for a, another concoction. And if I don't need it, I'll give it to a friend. But if I had my trusty water bottle to hand, I'd just fill it up with water. Change the way that you do things. You can make significant differences. All of these ideas and many, many more are shoehorned into the book of rubbish ideas. Take yourself down to the local library, get yourself out a copy and start making those changes. They will have a positive impact on your local environments and ultimately your global environments. Rubbish doesn't have to be a dirty word.